بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم ما بعد Welcome brothers and sisters to this character development program. Uh, inshallah, this will be a short program, uh, about 30 to 40 minutes, inshallah. Uh, this is a continuation of, of this beautiful book of this great scholar of the third century of Islam. And he has brought in this uh, Hafiz ibn, ibn, Hafiz ibn Hazm, Hazm, he has brought in this book 50 such principles which uh, will inshallah secure the success of a person. Now, in today's day and age when there's so much, you know, out there in terms of self-help books, in terms of, um, you know, ways of, uh, you know, bettering our businesses, bettering our lives and so much yoga and, and, and various different, you know, uh, elements out there which claim to better us as people. And perhaps there is some good in some of them. However, we can never find anything more uh, pure and more better than the teachings of our ulama and the teachings of our predecessors, Salaf Salihin, and in this case, from the very early scholars uh, from the Quran and Sunnah, gathering together the knowledge from there and saying that here are principles for you in your life. If you follow these principles, you would be a successful family man, a successful businessman, a successful brother and sister, and you would be a successful Muslim and Muslimah as well. So Alhamdulillah, we have completed uh, quite a number of topics already. All of this is available on our YouTube play, page at Nurul Huda under the playlist Nur Rawdatul Uqala wa Nuzhatul Fudala, which is the name of this book by Hafiz ibn Hatim rahimahullah ta'ala. And uh, you can go back and find those principles there. I believe we are in the last uh, quarter of the book if we might uh, put a number to it. So today's discussion, inshallah, will be around relationships and uh, what it means to, to, to have a good relationship or what it means to maintain a relationship. So he brings the heading of his uh, Ibn Habban, rahimahullah, he says that today will be the discussion about avoiding leaving the avoiding of cutting off relations from Muslims in general. Whereas to stay brothers and sisters, the opposite is necessary in Islam where Islam calls for the maintaining of ties, for the joining of ties, for avoiding anything which is detrimental or which erodes our relationships. Uh, in fact, Islam is al -khuwa, the brotherhood. And it's in by nature, by essence, it joins, it brings together. We are not related by blood. We are not related by culture. We are not related by color or language, but purely because we are brothers and sisters in Iman and in faith, we are qualified to have a brotherhood and sisterhood. And it's one of the رابطتين, as the scholars say, it's one of the most strongest relationships that there is. And subhanAllah, we see this beautifully played out uh, when, you know, the Muslims, Muhajirin came to Medina and the Prophet السلام, made, you know, paired them up with brothers, how they gave up their own uh, livelihood, 50% of their assets, how they gave the rights of over their own non-Muslim brothers. They gave rights to their Muslim uh, Muhajirin brothers who uh, made pairs for them. And they, they, they held better relations with those Muslim brothers than they did with their uh, biological brothers who were non-Muslims. And this is Islam. This is the Al-Ukhuwat Al-Islamiyya. Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa. Surely certainly believers are a brotherhood and 
Islam goes further. It outlaws anything that would lead to the breakup of this brotherhood. So mocking each other, backbiting each other, assuming the worst of each other, bad thoughts of each other, anything that would erode or break down this relationship, Islam stops us from this. Islam calls us to higher ideals, the high ground that maintain these relationships because it's the right thing to do. So Habib ibn Hibban, rahimahullah, as we know, he starts every chapter with a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And here he brings the hadith, the sahih hadith. He says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَبَاغَضُوا وَلَا تَنَافَسُوا وَلَا تَحَاسَدُوا وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا وَلَا يَحِلُّ لِمُسْلِمٍ أَنْ يَهْجُرْ آخَاهُ فَوْقَ ثَلَاثِ Subhanallah. So Nabi alayhi salam gives a few pieces of advice. I'm going to first tell you the last part and then I'm going to connect it with the first Rand, uh, with the first few advices that were given. Nabi alayhi salam ends this topic or this hadith or this pro prophetic statement saying it is not permissible from halal, la yahillu, it is not permissible for a Muslim to sever ties with his brother more than three days. In fact, I'm just going to digress for a second. There are other hadith which come, which mention that if somebody passes away, and this is a very strong hadith, subhanAllah, may Allah protect us, that the one who severs ties from his brother more than three days and he dies, then he will go to the fire, he will go to Jahannam, and may Allah protect us from this. I will explain in a few minutes what severing ties would mean, but just in its initial sense, this, this should be quite evident to us that how strongly Islam enforces or encourages or motivates us to maintain good relations with all those around us. Of course, brothers and sisters, when we say relations, those who are closest to us have the most rights on us. Our husbands, our wives, our children, our parents, and then from there, our family members, broaden that to our friends, broaden that to the Muslims, to the Muslim Ummah. So at every stage, this is applicable, but those who are closer to us, of course, have a, have a more, more uh, important right over this than others. And another hadith, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, the one who stays away from his brother without you know, severe ties from his brother for more than a year, it's as though it's as though he has shed blood. He has shed blood. Subhanallah. So that we can see the strength of this. Nevertheless, how does this tie up to the first part of the hadith that was recited after we understand this? Nabi Ali Salam is giving us some prescriptions that lead your life by these characteristics. La tabagadu don't be in a habit of hating each other or involving yourself with things that will bring hate, that will create hate, hatred. And don't compete with each other in this worldly things. The worldly things are such by nature that as soon as that comes in, it spoils everything. It's like poison which is added to pure white milk and that Whenever the dunya, whenever competition for more, better, higher, latest um, comes in, then immediately that spoils everything. And that creates, starts creating enmity and, and everything. That's the source of everything, basically. It's the root of all evil. Love of this world, love of status. You know, hankering after 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 illicit gain, all of this <clears throat> just brings upon us uh, unhappiness, and you know uh, we start pandering towards our lower selves, our our animal self, and and there can't be any goodness in that. Wala tahasadu and don't be jealous of each other. Uh, in fact. Let's understand it this way. 
that whenever we are jealous on any favor or, 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 or on somebody we know, Allah has given them some, alhamdulillah, health, you know, beauty, knowledge, um, wealth, rizq, uh, goodness, success, anything that we feel a bit of jealousy on, remind yourself immediately that this is from the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am yahsuduna nasa ala ma atahumullahu min fadli. Allah asks us this question in the Quran. Do you make or do they have hasad on am yahsuduna nasa? Do they have hasad or for the people? Ala ma atahumullahu min fadli. On what Allah has given them. Allah is the one to give knowledge. Allah is the one to give happiness. Allah decides and distributes wealth and risk. Allah decides and distributes uh, beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided this in taqdeer, in nasib. So if a person is actually having hatred or uh, sorry, jealousy on another person, he is actually or she is actually je jealous on the favor of Allah and he's questioning the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this in the opposite sense, is a, a very effective way, a most impactful way to clear the heart of, of, of jealousy. It's natural, brothers and sisters. As humans, these feelings pass through our hearts and pass through our minds, and we are tested with them. But one way to protect ourselves from this is just to remember and remind ourselves, this is a decision of Allah. Allah has decided this for this person, and if Allah is pleased with this favor for this person, then I am pleased as well. What right do I have to question this? Yes, you have full right, full opportunity to make dua to Allah to grant you that uh, without hoping or uh, wishing that it was taken away from that person. So that's one way of, 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 of uh, you know, dealing with this. Another way of dealing with this is immediately make dua for barakah. For the person, may Allah increase you, may Allah grant you more, may Allah protect you, may Allah preserve you. So you make dua, and it doesn't have to be on the face. In fact, it's more effective to make a silent dua in the heart, in our own private time. We make our own duas, oh Allah, grant this person more, protect them, help them, may Allah grant them success. And immediately we will see that these feelings will pass through. Nabi Sallallahu goes on to say, Wala tadabaru, and don't give each other your back. Don't turn away from each other. Wakunu ibadullahi ikhwana and be unto each other like uh, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like brothers. Be with each other as the servants of Allah, as brothers. And this is equality in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is better off or worse off in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except with taqwa. And in our eyes, in our ranks, we are equal because we are all the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is where Nabi alayhi salam comes and then he says it is not permissible for a Muslim to stay away or to sever ties from his brother more than three days. Uh, one day, two days, yes, if there was a misunderstanding, there was, a, you know, argument, there was... Uh, you want some heated uh, discussion and debate, then just to calm things, ca calm things down, to create a bit of a buffer, to to sort of settle things out, and to you know perhaps discuss it and think it through. One, two, three days are allowed for this, but over three days, a person has to deal with their feelings. Now, this is a very interesting point here as well, that you know when a per when morning when a person loses their father or mother or child in the islamic uh, in islamic in the islamic uh, teachings we are allowed to only mourn officially for 3 days so ulama explain on this that allah has given us 3 days to mourn it Making us, under, Allah knows us better than anyone. Allah created us. Allah knows our makeup. Allah knows our understanding, our emotional state. Therefore, a human being has the capacity and the ability to deal with something as heavy as the loss of a person 
uh, their, their blood, their relation, their father, their child, and within three days and to settle back into their normal self. Of course, we're not talking about forgetting. We're not talking about, you know, uh, not crying or not feeling sad. We're talking about grief. That grief is something that Islam teaches us that within three days, deal with your grief, mourn as much as you want to mourn. But after three days now, accept the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sabr and move on. Move on. Your life is still there. You still have responsibilities. You still have to make your prepare for your own day that you will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be sad, yes. Shed a tear or two whenever you need to. But in terms of mourning and grief, three days is enough. And here Nabi Sallallahu is saying more than three days to sever our ties with our wives, with our husbands, with our children, with friends, with family. We should overcome and deal with our issues and normalize relations within three days. Now, we're going to come to this aspect of how this is practically applicable because we know emotions is a very strong thing, right? It's a very strong thing. And sometimes emotions can be carried around for years and years and and. And the trauma that we have gone through, whatever kind of emotional trauma, sometimes it's not easy to let that go. So, inshallah, we'll discuss that now. Just coming back to a point mentioned earlier that Islam is enforcing this. Islam is teaching us that the Muslim ummah is like one body, the hadith says, like a, a fortress. We strengthen each other. We are like one body. If one part of the body is paining, the rest, the rest of the body is paining. This is that concept of why it's important not to keep away from others, not to sever our ties. We are not a nation which can live in, in isolation, in solitude. We don't have mo uh, monks in, in, in our tradition. Our tradition is about Jama'a and Jumu'a meeting and you know joining Salatul Jumu'a, Salatul Jama'a, Jama'atul Muslimin. It's about gathering, it's about strengthening one another and taking care of the rights of one another. And this is something which we should endeavor and talk about and speak to our children about as well. Unfortunately, sometimes in a Western country, which by nature is an individualistic society, we tend to withdraw to ourselves, withdraw to our own homes and, you know, just remain there uh, and not keep contact or not keep relations with others. We don't visit the house of Allah. We don't, we are not connected to the masjid. And this is detrimental to our iman. It's detrimental to our Islam, to our identity, to our, uh, you know, faith. Because we cut ourselves off from Jama'atul Muslimin. Uh, yes, if you are staying away for a particular reason, then of course that is there. Uh, but generally, this is why it's saying Antahajarul Muslimin Akafat, and generally just to stay away from people, generally to stay away from Muslims is not a good habit. It's not a good thing. Here, I would like to add here as well that. Uh, it is my personal encouragement that whenever, whenever the opportunity is there for us as Muslims to give our children the education of Islam uh, and they are not attending madrasa, they are not attending any Islamic institution, let us at least at a minimum keep them enrolled in an Islamic school, in a Muslim school. Because specifically in Western countries, we need that environment. We need those links we need those connections we need those uh, that identity to form around us and as parents it's not enough that we are it's not enough we need to let our children have as many links to deen as possible and of course they are getting it through one more through the through the muslim school and islamic schools so this is my personal advice on this on this topic here uh so coming now to this discussion of how do we then deal with heavy emotional baggage, 
which is there and we we feel we can't just face this person because it brings back so many strong memories and upsets us and things like this let us understand on this point tahajurul muslimin is just severing ties and not no connection whatsoever no talking no assistance no salam this is what it means total and complete shutdown and cut off yes islam on the opposite side accepts the fact that not everyone can get along with everyone allah has made us uh, made us differently some get along better than others uh, and allah has made it such that our arwah and our ruh and our our souls uh, you know from alam arwah from the realm of the souls either got along understood each other and clicked had the same similar dna if you want to call it and where others did not click and did not have the similar dna so in this world also those who got along they got along get along here and those who did not click in alam arwah here as well will not get along so islam accepts that fact it's understood however to keep communication open this is what islam is speaking about when my brother muslim my sister muslima needs assistance i will assist without any uh, grudge without any uh, hesitation without any question when i need assistance my brother muslim will help me will assist me when some there's a good word to be given i will give a good word so that to keep those doors open this is what it speaks about if i am invited to accept the invitation if somebody is sick to visit the sick person so just fulfilling the basic core needs of the muslim community is enough to be connected to the community it does not mean that i need to befriend every single person every single muslim and muslima and become their best friend and you know i have to force myself come what may that i have to you know be there and sit hours and hours no this is not what is meant here so let us inshallah here make this intention to clear our hearts and to open our hearts to those who have made mistakes in regards to us those who have uh you know perhaps overstep their mark those who were disrespectful those who offended us and not to cut them out completely but to keep that open heart and to make excuses for them this is where i would like to move on habib ibn hibban brings this point he says that la yuzhidannaka fi akhin laka an tarahu zalla zalla brings a poem he says it should not be that any one of your brothers or sisters makes the slightest error and you decide that's it that's it i'm cutting ties with this person um and i'm moving on no this is not the the culture of the muslim ummah this should not be the culture of the muslim ummah wal mar'u yatrahu alladhina yalunahu fi sharri allah he says that don't be like that person who at the slightest slightest mistake or offense he throws yet he throws the person away and he turns around and he walks never to look back again and he leaves that person uh you know to be uh, at the mercy of 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 people of deception and things like that and he mentions later that at least as a muslim brother and sister if someone is not doing the right thing and we are close enough to in advise them we should advise them again the condition here brothers and sisters is that we are close enough because sometimes unsolicited advice creates more negative outcome than positive if the person we are advising is not ready to hear that advice or does not want to take that advice from us we are not close enough then that will create a, a bigger problem and we should be uh intelligent and wise enough to know when and when uh, when and in which place and with whom uh, advice can be given and should be given then habib ibn hibban brings another poem which is actually a hadith in itself 
that the best way is not to be excessive. Uh, when you are excessive in anything, anything in friendships and in, in, in enmity, you are going to have a problem. So if you are looking to keep those doors open, doors of communication, doors of good relations, learn to have balance in your life. He says, وَلَا تَكُفِي حُبِّ الْأَخِلَّاءِ مُفْرِطًا Don't be excessive in your friendships with each other. فَإِنْ أَنْتَ أَبْغَطَّ الْبَغِيضَ فَأَجْمِلِي Even if you have a dislike for someone and there's some, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, problem there, don't excessively hate the person. فَإِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي Because you have no idea مَتَى أَنْتَ مُبْغِضٌ that today, next month, next year, two years down the line, for whatever reason, whatever, and it, and it happens all the time, that that person who you love so much, and this happens generally when you become friends with someone for the first time, right? And mashallah, the first time you meet and you click and you, you feel very comfortable with each other, and then the families get together and then mashallah we at each other's house every weekend and then we're going out with each other and then holidays we're going with each other and then you know uh, we're spending uh, all our time together and then and then all of a sudden subhanallah things you know she said this he said that this is what they did and, and all of a sudden now after sometimes it's the opposite there's, be, there's a total split and, and we don't want to even talk about the person or even look at them and then the opposite is also true where something happens sick at work and a person develops this intense hatred and intense dislike for someone and then and they've only got you you only got these bad you know thoughts about this person and then subhanallah after a year after two years after six months you got to know them, they helped you with something, you helped them with something, you met somewhere, you had a meal together, and after one year, the whole perception changed. And this is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Habib habibaka haunamma. When you love somebody, when you get along with someone, haunamma, do it in, in proportion. Asa yakuna baghidaka yawmamma. It is possible that the same person would Turn into your enemy. وَأَبْغِدْ بَغِيدَكَ يَوْمًا مَا عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ حَبِيبَكَ يَوْمًا مَا وَأَبْغِدْ بَغِيدَكَ هَوْنًا مَا And when you have enmity and dislike for someone, have that also in balance and in moderation. Don't overstep the lines of sharia. Uh, try to control your tongue, your anger, your emotions. Uh, because it's possible that that same person would become... Uh, you know, a close confidant and friend later. So, subhanallah, this is the teachings of deen and teachings of sharia and in this lies success. It's, it's about not bur burning our bridges, brothers and sisters, because we, as, 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 as um, human beings, we need each other. We need each other and perhaps at this particular moment, I don't need you and you don't need me. But Perhaps after one week, after one month, after two years, you will have some need and I will be able to assist you. And I will have some need at another point and you will be able to assist me. So it's about keeping that communication and connection and not burning our bridges. This is such an important thing. And it all starts with our tongue. You know, I think it's safe to say nine out of 10 times we regret what we said and, we re and not what we didn't say. Nine times out of ten, we are questioning ourselves, why did I say this? Why did I, you know, act in this way? And maybe one times out of ten, we question, why didn't I speak up? It's always in terms of being impulsive, being quick to move and quick to say. I read a beautiful saying the other day that if there is a perception on something or there's a feeling on something, hold yourself. Hold yourself. Give yourself time because as human beings, most of the time, 
we are judging things according to our perception of that, according to our understanding of that, according to our experience of that, whereas in actual fact, it is not how we are perceiving it in reality. So don't be, if this is a lesson we can teach our children, be more thoughtful, be more, uh, you know, patient, stay back, you know, control, bite your tongue, take take a moment. That's why Quran and Hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may our lives be sacrificed for him. He said, if you're angry, drink water. And if you are sitting, stand, if you are standing, sit. If you are sitting, lie down. Uh, if you are in a place, remove yourself from that place. Meaning, give some space. Change your, change yourself. Change your position. Change your hey, uh, your 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 form, and get busy with something else because you don't want to rush into anything or make any statement or say anything which you will regret later. So, coming back to our point here, brothers and sisters, that this is what Islam is teaching us. That we keep our, and, and again, the benefit is for the Muslim community as a whole, as a whole. How many a time it has happened that the person with good character and good akhlaq, if not today, if not tomorrow, Allah opens the doors of, uh, you know, of opportunity for them, just purely on their character. And how often has it happened that because of bad character, doors have closed? Uh, and, and a saying so beautifully says that a personality, personalities, talents can open doors, but only good character can keep them open. Only good character, a personality, um, a talent, uh, a skill can open a door, but it is only through good character that that door will remain open. So this is, inshallah, hopefully is something that for us to take home from in this aspect that what we are being taught in this particular subject here of today's discussion, which is not to cut ourselves off from the Muslim ummah and Muslim community. Uh, Habib ibn Hibban goes on, he says, however, don't be naive. As a, as a Muslim, you need to have your words about yourself. You are not a gullible, naive person as well. When you are making close friends, you need to judge the character of the person that you are getting into a connection and relationship with. If you notice them to be uh, good natured, they have good character, they have taqwa, they are conscious of Allah in the things that they do, then fashdud, hold on to them. And when they will make a mistake, and la mahala, he says, definitely they will slip. As human beings, kullu bani Adam every son of Adam, every child of Adam will is a sinner. But the best of the sinners are those who repent. So that mistake is going to be there. It's going to come from your wife, from your husband, from your children, from your friend, to your colleague at work, to your in-laws. To your parents, to anyone, your, your, your employers, your employees, at some point, they're going to make a mistake in regards to you. At this point, If you can, kindly advise them, but don't, don't cut that tie. There's no benefit for you to cut that tie. Be tolerant, allow for that, allow you know, allow for the mistake to happen. Allow and work on it and fix it and move on. Um, so this is that beautiful teaching of Deen that we are not naive as well. You know, this, this lesson is not telling us, please don't misunderstand. This lesson is not telling us that if you are in a relationship where you've been taken advantage of or you, Zulam has been made on you or you've been oppressed or... You know, you're getting the raw, uh, you're getting a raw deal or you're getting the, you know, uh, whatever. So you're struggling that, no, you just put your head down and that you carry on. No, uh, Islam teaches us that part also, that 
لسوء الظن that to be cautious to be cautious is part of deen and no muslim gets bitten from one uh, hole twice so these are all the teachings that are there as well but balance with this aspect that we keep our uh, you know uh, our uh, general uh, communication streams open and we meet people with respect and we meet people with honor and we you know assist them where we where we can we make salam to everyone uh, we overlook people's faults make excuses for them and this is something between husband and wife is very important whenever somebody will mention because generally husband and wife you know we, as as companions of life uh people as husband and wife we complain we complain to each other things like this but remember as husband and wife we can also help our spouse be the best version of themselves and each one is looking to be the best version of themselves uh, only iblis is the is is, is mardud everyone has good intentions So if somebody mentions something, you know, your mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, or sister-in-law, make an excuse for that person that maybe they were sick, maybe they didn't realize, maybe they forgot, you know, this and that, and 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 be in a habit of accepting that excuse. Yes, maybe, inshallah. So that 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 will help, you know, ease that 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 anguish and that and that worry and suffering. Uh, Abu Ibn Ibn Rahimahullah says that there are three kinds of people. Asbabu uh, al-Muaddi ila al-Hujrani bain al-Muslimin thalatha ashya. There are three things that increase the possibility of severing of complete ties. He says the first one is when a person doesn't have patience for the mistakes of others, as we have just discussed, and on the slightest mistake of some of a person, he, you know. just moves on cuts ties and moves on he says that this kind of a person will never have a friend left in their life because there's no one who doesn't make mistakes there's no one who doesn't make errors so if this is the attitude this person will die alone will remain alone in their life he says the second reason why people break ties is because they are fed with misinformation by tattle tales by people who are backbiting by people who are you know uh, sheep uh, in uh, wolves in sheep clothing and this is something we should be cautious about he said uh, and he said that at that point try to make an excuse try to make an excuse for 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 that person that maybe this happened or maybe that happened or maybe because of this and inshallah that will help uh, just on this point there's a beautiful saying that some people don't realize that their own opinion of the world their own opinion of everyone around them is actually a statement of their own character it's actually a statement of their own character now uh, this is a very sensitive thing brothers and sisters i know i'm i've got like 1 minute 2 minutes left but i just want to talk about this we need to be careful about what we are talking about so if the only thing we talk about is the bad qualities of others then actually that's a, a testimony of our own character if all that we talk about is we 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 complain and 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 we only know how to complain about everything that's going wrong in our life and how everyone is 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 you know responsible for this it's actually a testimony of who we are so we are mirrors unto one another what what is actually in us is what we see in other people so subhanallah this is a very deep point you know uh, which we should think about but more deeply ramadan is coming up turn to allah subhanahu wa taala ask allah for guidance for assistance for help that allah اللهم مهدنا لاحسن الاخلاق والاعمال لا يهدي لاحسنهما الا انت ذا حديث اوف رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم دعاء او الله guide us to the best of a'mal and akhlaq you are the only one who can guide us to the best of it 
and protect us from the worst of amal and akhlaq, you are the only one who can give protection from the worst of it. The very beautiful dua to make. Uh, let's ask Allah for those for that guidance. Ask Allah for that for that pre training for that teaching. Because character, brothers and sisters, is not built in one day. Character takes years and years to build. Uh, integrity takes years and years to build. And we are learning from the day we were. We could understand our parents have been teaching us and we overcome and learn as well as we move along in life. So we need Allah's assistance and help with this. So coming back to this point, the second reason why people subvertise is because they are fed with misinformation and a way of protecting you for yourself from that is to make an excuse for the brother Muslim or the sister. The third reason why people subvertise and this is more a nature, a temperamental thing, that the person becomes very bored very quickly, disinterested very quickly. So they make friends with someone and very quickly they, uh, you know, don't get tired of the person and move to a next person and move to a next person and move to a next person. Again, such a person will not really have, um, you know, friends in life or people they would be able to, you know, uh, connect with because it's not a good quality to have that a person, uh, you know, in fact, he brings a beautiful poem. He says, do not befriend such a person. <laughs> that befriending a, a person who becomes disinterested very quickly and just moves on is like befriending a mirage, uh, which is deceptive. It's there one minute and it's not. Or, or it is like a, a thunder, which gives a lightning, sorry, uh, it is like the, 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 the thunder, which gives a sound, uh, but, but the light of it, it gives the light, but the sound can't be heard. So you would see this, you would see the light, but you won't hear the thunder. It, it's not there. It's it's very you know uh, shady or very uh, unpredictable or, or very uh, temporary, and it's here one minute and it's not here the next. So we are not naive in that sense as well. You know we make uh, you know good judgments and uh, we we try our best to find. Uh, good friends, friends who will help us come closer to our deen and be the best versions of ourselves. Um, I come to the conclusion of this topic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our hearts clean. Inshallah, Ramadan is here. Let's try to use the weapon of dua as much as possible at the time of iftar, at the time of uh, you know, tahajjud after so after while we are after suhoor or before suhoor, uh, after our salawat, try to make some dua, ask Allah for that inspiration and guidance. Because ultimately, dealing with these kind of things really brings ease and, and happiness to ourselves and clears our mind and our heart. May Allah grant us the akhlaq of the Prophet, والسلام, where he said, Inna kala ala khuluqin azim, you have the most noblest most highest, most greatest akhlaq and character. May Allah teach us that akhlaq. May Allah allow us to be steadfast on that character. May Allah allow us to, inshallah, teach our children and our progeny this beautiful character of Islam, which always aims for the highest and best version of ourselves, inshallah. And it is for us to strive to reach there, inshallah. May Allah guide us uh, and help us. Next week, inshallah, we will have another program, not, not on uh, character development. I think there's, uh, we're having a guest coming. Uh, it will be on, on, on Ramadan and, 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 and uh, welfare and, and the, the suffering of the ummah and things like that. The week after, inshallah, we will continue with uh, this discussion. The topic under discussion would be Zikrul Hathi ala Luzumil Hilm Indal Adha, the aspect of tolerance. Uh, in the time of difficulty and, and why, you know, how to inculcate that or why that is a quality of success for us. So keep your eye on the Facebook page, inshallah, 
uh, like the Facebook page and inshallah you will get these up, uh, updates accordingly. Jazakumullahu kullu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.